Let's come here to the front to Daryl. Daryl Nail, Fox 35. Um, this would seem like a big week for you, your car company earlier in the week, big uh, moment for your aerospace, aerospace company today. Can you kind of talk me through what that moment was like? Um, two questions. What that moment was like, um, where you were watching it, what you were feeling. Uh, you know, did you turn and hug Hans or did you knuckle <laughs> bump him? Um, or, I, uh, and I, have then, I have a confession to make. I, I didn't eat hug Hans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yeah, the tilt of the rocket when it came down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it was. Uh, I think the the whole SpaceX team was super excited. Um, they've they've all worked incredibly hard to uh, get to this day, and um, it's a lot of work ahead for sure. Because um, making the the landing and the reflight um, uh, easy is is hard, um, and. Um, Rapid and complete reusability is, is the thing that's that's really important for the reusability to be cost effective, um, li like an aircraft. Um, so if, if you know an aircraft, you can you can recycle a 747 uh, that went from London to um, Los Angeles, and you can recycle that in three hours, two three hours maybe, um, and and do another flight. Um, we got to ultimately get rockets to that point. Um, Kind of explain. Oh, oh the reason it's tilting is the because the, it's the, it would actually it was quite windy. Um, so it, it had winds up to fifty miles an hour, on as it was coming coming down. So it's tilting into the wind. Okay, question right here. Hi, Josh Jenner with the Orbital Dot Space. First off, I just want to say congratulations. Um, secondly, I want to ask about the Falcon Nine Heavy. Um, given that it's going to be going further and faster, what will be the reuse capabilities of those stages? Falcon Heavy. I say, thinking about that, this is like quite a high, high Parker factor about uh, Falcon Heavy. Um, that, that's, uh, you know, we originally, I mean, maybe we should have named it the Falcon 27. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we thought maybe that people might balk at that. Um, it's a lot of engines to work simultaneously. Um, and, um, and you have uh, three times as many separation events, uh, so uh, it's um, it's a lot more it's a lot trickier of a proposition than than Falcon 9, um, but the payload capabilities are um, are amazing, and it's uh, it's got a lot of potential, um, and um, yeah, and particularly for uh, doing the the heavy high altitude uh, geostationary satellites um, that are, that currently can only be flown. Uh, by um, or by Ariane, like the, or you know, the, if, if it's a really heavy satellite, um, good. Yeah, so so that's um, that, that's going to be an important uh, mission for showing that we can we can do the the biggest satellites in the world and, that, and then some. Um, if uh, Falcon Heavy, you know, if it reaches orbit, um, it uh, it'll be the uh, the biggest rocket to reach orbit since um, well. Uh, yeah, uh, well, since, since it, by, by thrust since the space shuttle and the um, uh, and Saturn V, and it'll be the biggest op operating rocket today until SLS is active. Um, so um, it'd be you know, load liftoff thrust approaching five million pounds. Um, Saturn V and the shuttle were about seven and a half. Um, yeah. Here, let's take a question here, and then we'll do some social media. Yeah, J.D. Taylor with USA in Space. Uh, again, congratulations, and also congratulations on your Model 3 launch as well. Uh, when, how often do you plan to do ground landings, and when is the next one that you're going to attempt to do? Um, we, right now, the, we expect about half of our landings to be ground and then half uh, to be uh, uh, ocean landings. Um, and then over time, we do want to, as we refine the performance of the rocket, um, and it can pr improve the just all the elements of flight. Um, and it's it's amazing how sort of a few percent improvement here and there sort of adds up, and and then you're able to achieve enough margin to bring it all the way back to land. So we're hopeful that in the long run, we'll move from say half of our missions being ocean landing to to maybe a, th a third of them or or, or a quarter, because um, it certainly is. Um, a lot easier to refly the rocket if it comes back to land. Um, and um, sorry, what was the other part of the question? The uh, just so I went in the, when's the next landing oh, next for 
Um, it's the next line landing. I think it's uh, probably uh, about three months away. So the next one's another another ocean landing. Um, it's two ocean landings, two geos, and yeah. then there's another CS mission, maybe that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably the most likely. So pr June, June. Yeah, so pr probably the the third mission from now will be um, a land landing, um, and uh, the next two are um, quite high velocity geo missions. So these will be uh, quite tough ship landings because it's going to come in really hot. Um, in fact, the, the the thing about the high velocity reentries is that they're they're not just it's not just a lot of wind force, but it's a lot of heat. Um, and that the heat goes, peak heating goes with the cube of velocity. So, um, like the, the way to understand the difficulty of achieving a given velocity is actually as the square, because the kinetic energy grows as the square of velocity, um, but then the, the peak heating goes, grows as the cube of velocity. So, it's really wants to melt. <laughs> yeah, I think we've got a question on social media. Can you give us that one? Sure. Um, we have a lot of questions on social media. This one's from NASA Watch, and um, he wants to know, how many times do you think you can reuse a used first stage? Um, I think uh, some, some aspects of the, the stage will have no meaningful life. I mean, they'll, they'll, meaning they, they'll, you could probably do them at 1,000 missions. Um, um, I think almost everything on the stage will be good for 10 or 20 missions. Um, and... Um, with minor refurbishment, you could get to 100. Um, this one is from Bart on, on Twitter, and they ask, can you, um, this might be for the NASA folks, can you talk about the schedule for the upcoming BEAM deployment on ISS? I don't know if there's... Sure. Um, so BEAM's going to be installed. We're thinking about the 15th or 16th of, uh, of this month, so uh, relatively quickly after uh, Dragon arrives. There's a certain period for thermal stabilization once it arrives. And, uh, and then the inflation is probably not until the end of May, somewhere around the 25th, 26th of May. Um, there's a lot of work involved in, in preparing for that, and, uh, and we also want a, a good quiescent period on board the International Space Station. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, this is, we've had four visiting vehicles. Uh, this will be the fourth in four weeks. So uh, we need a time when vehicles aren't coming and going. It turns out there's a high um, sun angle in the end of May which vehicles can't come and go during that time, and so it'll be a great time to inflate beam. So we're expecting, expect about the 20, 25th or 6th of, uh, of May for inflation, and like I said, uh, tax day for, uh, for installation on uh, ISS. Okay, let's come up here and take a question right, right here in the front. Hi, uh, Thaddeus Cesari with the Utica Phoenix. And for Elon, I was wondering if you foresee any competing launch providers following suit with reliability or reusability, and was that a hope of yours? It is. And what kind of edge does reusability give you over your competitors? <coughs> I think um, I, I'm hopeful that the um, other launch providers will head in the direction of re reusability. Um, I think it's it's quite it's quite fundamental. I mean, it, it's just as fundamental in rocketry as it is in other forms of transport, um, such as cars or planes or bicycles or anything. Um, the the cost to refuel our rocket um, or reload, which is actually mostly oxygen on board, um, is only about uh, two to three hundred thousand um, dollars. But the cost of the rocket itself is sixty million. You know, it's kind of like a an aircraft. Um, Aircraft are real expensive, but not to buy, to, to construct and, and buy, but uh, not expensive to refuel, relatively speaking. So um, so it's really quite fundamental. Like the, the potential, if you've got a, a rocket that can be uh, fully and rapidly reused, um, it's somewhere on the order of a hundredfold cost reduction in, in marginal cost. You still have your fixed cost, but in, in marginal cost, it's a hundredfold reduction. Drini Mom with CNN. This is for Mr. Musk. Congratulations. And um, is there anything that you and your companies are working on that can top the experience that you've had today? This, <laughs> um, well, this is a good one, for sure. Um, I think um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know about you, Hans, but I mean, I, I think the getting to orbit for the first time yeah. was, uh, I mean, that was probably the best one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, way up through 2008, we, we managed to do three launches, but they, they failed. Um, and I actually only had the money for, for three launches, but we managed to, that was the, the original plan of the world. After three, if we haven't succeeded, well, we, you know, maybe that, that, that should be, that, that's it. Um, but we managed to scramble and put together the parts for one, one final launch, and, and it worked. Um, so that launch four of Falcon 1 was, I think, the most profound. Um, and then, um, and then, you know, first launch Falcon 9, first launch Dragon, bringing Dragon back. Um, landing back at the Cape, um, I, I'd say for landing, landing back at the Cape was next best after just getting to orbit in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and for, for as for things in the future, um, we, we I think we'll we'll be successful. Ironically, when it becomes boring, um, you know. <laughs> so when it's like, oh yeah, another landing. Okay, uh, no news there. That's um, that's that's actually when it will be successful. Um, and um, you know, there's still there's still you know a few more things we want to do. We want to try to um, bring the fairing, the, the big nose cone back, um, and. Um, that that'll certainly help because those each of those cost several million, um, and um, you know, Falcon Heavy should be quite exciting. Um, seeing three boosters come back. Okay, let's take a question right here. Mark Gotch, historical space imagery. Elon, congratulations uh, once again. You have proved to the world that you can land your rockets, whether it be on land or on a drone ship on the water. But looking forward to this future, looking at your rockets being recovered and being reusable, looking at your success with the Dragon capsule in terms of its abort test, protecting astronauts' lives for the future, looking at coupling that with your rockets, we see the foreseeable future of manned spaceflight at a very economical rate. Can you tell me, you pursuing more landings on water versus land, when will you begin to go forward to your future of manned spaceflight? Well, the, the first uh, uh, test flights with, with astronauts um, working with NASA, hopefully that first flight will occur towards the end of next year. Um, and uh, so that's going to be real exciting. Um, we're nearing the completion of uh, Dragon 2. Um, and we'll, um, we'll first do an unmanned test flight and then uh, then add crew. Um, and we, we obviously want to be super careful and, and make sure that things are uh, as safe as they possibly can be. Um, but yeah, it, it could be as soon as... Uh, Next year, that that we do the the first crewed space flight, um, and you know I just also just like to take a a moment. Um, you know I, I, the SpaceX has got uh, five five thousand people, and um, I get a lot of attention, but uh, it's they really did the work. Uh. Is it true you are a success right across the board? And again, as you say, you couldn't have done any of this without your dedicated people. Yeah. It's an awesome team. Thank you, sir. Thanks. All right, let's uh, take a couple on the phone here. Chris Ryan from the, the uh, Chris Davenport from the Washington Post, I think, is on the line. Mr. Davenport, your line is open. All right. Uh, any others on the phone? Okay, Ryan Ruggiero. Mr. Ruggiero, your line is open. All right, let's come back here. We'll take about two more questions, and that'll wrap us up. Any more over here? All right, well, we got one over here. Um, Robin Simangle with the New York Observer. Um, Elon, you always uh, mention that reusable rockets is uh, 
the long term goal of that is to make colonization on Mars cheaper yeah. and sustainable. Can you give us an update uh, on Mars and the company's plans, long term plans? Well, I think probably um, you know now is not not the time to give give a, a sort of a full update. Um, I am planning on giving a talk at the International Astronautical Congress, which will be in Mexico this year in September. And um, I thought that would be a good venue to uh, describe what we think would be a good approach, something that would, would be a f effective for establishing uh, a city on Mars. Um, I think it's going to sound pretty crazy. Um, so it should be at least entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, we're going to wrap up our Watch coverage here for SpaceX CRS-8, and uh, hopefully you'll look forward to our grapple coverage uh, coming up on Sunday morning. So with that, that will conclude our briefing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.